So guys, we've got a little special project on the ramp uh, today. We've got a 1990 Kawasaki ZX250. So a very, very rare machine. Um, it's had pretty much a full rebuild from brake discs to forks, calipers, rocker covers, uh, chains, sprockets, carbs, etc. Pretty much the whole thing's been gone through for a friend of mine. Um, we're just at the final stages. And we are just in the process of finishing the carbs off. So the carbs have been rebuilt. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get any O-rings when he bought the other seal kits for them. So what we've done is managed to take the old O-rings off of the fuel and the vacuum pipes between the carbs. And actually just measure them with the internal external diameter and the thickness of them. And then go online to an O-ring company and just order a selection of o-rings that are as near as we can get to them and we're just in the process of fitting them on and putting the carburetors back together ready to put them on and balance them so i thought you could join us for that so here we can see guys we've got the uh, number one and two carburetors still connected together we've got number three and number four there on the bench and we've got a fuel pipe t-piece between number two and three there a straight through piece between three and four and then on the vacuum side we've got this t-piece between three and four and between one and two in there so i so say the carbs have been rebuilt already so they've had all new um, float valves and main jets pilot jets everything else etc but we couldn't get hold of the o-rings at the time we'd done them so now we've gone back and redone the o-rings now the old o-ring condition wise um, they didn't look too bad until you actually got them off and then I mean this one's broken coming off but when you actually I don't know if you guys can see that in there but you can see it's perished in the rubber and always always replace the o-rings when rebuilding carburetors because as soon as you put them back together even if they don't leak straight away you can guarantee once they've been through a few heat cycles um, and they'll just, they're so brittle anyway, they will then just end up leaking fuel and you'll have all the carbs apart again and you'll be cursing a lot. And I'm only speaking from experience there, so. You can see here quite clearly on this vacuum T-piece that the, this is the new O-ring fitted on this end. And you can see how much larger it is than the plastic piece. And this is the old O-ring still here. Ignore this repair that's been carried out previously by somebody else. Um, we're looking at the o-ring part here and you can see that o-ring is still fitted but how flat it is to the plastic part whereas this part's raised up to seal with this fresh o-ring on so we're going to replace this one put the carburetors back together Nice and straightforward to put together these carburetors because they've got the rail that holds them together at the front, at the top, and then the screw holes that hold the base of the carburetors together as well. So all we need to do is slide the carburetor down, ensure the mounting holes are above the base rail, fit our centre spring there. And then line the fuel hose up, fuel connector up, and wiggle her in. Easy as that. So the next one we've got the additional fuel pipe in there. Vacuum hose goes in here. It's very important to get the orientation of this vacuum hose correct. If you have it pointing when the carbs, it needs to be pointing up like this. If it's pointing out there, it gets in the way of the airbox. So all these little bits and pieces, always take note of them when they come off so that they go back together in the same orientation. And 
and then number four again slide it down the rail over the vacuum pipe over the fuel connector and wiggle our own Now you can see the fuel pipes, T-piece fuel pipe, fuel pipe, and the vacuum hose connector. You can see the old one there with the old O-rings on, how easily that moves around. Whereas the new one, nice and nice and solid where the O-rings are gripping inside there to seal it up. Same with the fuel tap. Still moves, so it's correct size O-ring. But it's just nice and sealing now, and a fresh rubber on there. And everybody loves a fresh rubber. So you can see here quite clearly with the old O-rings how they just, there's no resistance at all when you're pushing them in and out of the vacuum chamber of the carburetor. Push it straight in and out. Which is no good, they will not seal like that. Don't use too much o-ring grease because if you slide it over you could then end up blocking up the vacuum tube itself. It's just enough so when you push it in it doesn't snag and split the new o-ring.
All that's left to do now is refit the choke slides, put them back on the bike and balance them up. So guys, another quick point to make about these is these are carbs and if any of you guys have friends, family or know anybody who works within the fitness industry then you probably know a lot of people say that carbs are actually bad for you. Now fortunately, if you also speak to them they will tell you that complex carbs are actually okay in moderation. So luckily for us these are quite complex carbs so we're not going to have any problem fiddling around with these all day every day they're not going to do anything to our physical health although they may have an impact on our mental health once we've had all the springs pinging all over the workshop all day okay folks we've uh, we've got the carburetors back on the bike and we're just having a quick go at trying to balance them up um, you like our, our temporary fuel tank here perfect you can see Larry the leaks made an appearance uh, he's in charge of this, so hopefully he's uh, fully up to speed on carburetor balancing. So yeah, we've come to balance it, we've got all the vac pipes on. Uh, we've had it started and running, we've actually run into a bit of an issue, which uh, we think we know what the problem is, so we've just swapped one of the slides over to a different carburetor, and then we're going to see if the fault moves. So we'll start it up. Still cold a little bit, so a little bit of choke. Come on, Larry. There. If you guys can see there, if you can see this vacuum slide on that carburetor there, it's bouncing up and down and wobbling around. So we'll pull the carbs back off and I'll explain to you what's going on. Okay folks, so here we go, we've got the carburetors back off and uh, what we found was when we put it together, cylinder number one, um, the vacuum slide was jumping around as you've just seen there. So we've moved the needle and the diaphragm across to number two. It was also actually leaking a little bit of fuel from the main jet even when the slide was fully shut. So on inspection what it looks like has happened is where the slide's been bouncing over a period of time, it's actually worn the needle seat in there which was just allowing a little bit of fuel to bypass and you could see it was slightly oval compared to the other ones so we've swapped the vacuum slide and needles over to here so this one is now not leaking fuel and what we've discovered is on the actual vacuum diaphragm itself on the slide diaphragm there's this little hole here is actually meant to have a very very small brass choke in it now these are super super rare carburetors um, unfortunately we couldn't get anything to do with these but what we have managed to get is some ZXR 400 carburetors which are slightly different, they're a larger bore, um, the fuel system arrangement slightly different on them but what they do have, even though the slide is a metal slide, they do have the same size choke, brass choke, you can see it there in these diaphragms. So we're going to take that little choke out, fit it into our diaphragms for the 250s and we're also going we've got a new set of needles to go in because where this seat is slightly worn with a new needle in there it's just enough to seal it up and hopefully because it now won't be fluctuating and chattering it won't wear the seat anymore and uh, we're going to try and do that put it back together and then see if we can balance these bad boys up So morning guys, um, unfortunately I've got some bad news to share with you this morning, not something I really wanted to have to record on, on camera, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with you guys and see what you, you folks think. So basically we've put these carburetors back together, they're on the bike, they're, all it was left to do was balance them up, that was the last thing to do and then the tank could go on the bike sorted. So last night I left, um, I left Larry and Gerard in charge and said look please boys just tune the carbs up, balance them up and leave them, that's fine. 
and this morning I've come up to the workshop I've walked in and look at what the state they've left it in down here so they've obviously had an absolute night on the sauce there's wine there's beer the ciders there. I mean, they've pulled the carbs back off. They've ripped them apart. I've got absolutely no idea what you guys are up to in here. I mean, Gerard, he's a bit of a thief around the paddock, like we said with the V-Power, but he's not an animal like this. This is all Larry's doing. And uh, it even looks, to be honest, it looks like they've been smoking spark plugs and snorting brake cleaner. So... I know it's not Gerard's fault, he's been led down the wrong path. So unfortunately, it's time to teach Larry a lesson here. So, come on, come on, come on. Go in there. folks the carbs are all back together they're all looking in one piece so we've now got the new diaphragm choke in there all back on and we've replaced the needles inside um, whilst we're here before we put them back on the bike just wanted to run through these quickly with you so these are CV carburetors or constant velocity carburetors so in this type of setup which is very very common we have these throttle plates here with the throttle linkage either on the end or in the center and when you turn the throttle cable it operates the throttle butterflies in there you can see opening and closing so when we're balancing these carburetors what we're doing is we're adjusting these springs and that is adjusting the opening of each of these throttle plates and it matches them as a pair so this spring here will match these two this spring here will match these two and once you've got the two ounces sets matched you can use a spring in the middle to try and match all four so the flow of air through each of these uh, carburetor inlets is the same if it's the same you can add the same amount of fuel and then get good performance and smooth running so these are called constant velocity carburetors because the throttle cables as i say operate the actual throttle plate and once the throttle plate is opened or closed it will change the amount of vacuum going through the carburetor. When that vacuum changes, that's what pulls on this diaphragm and actually lifts the slide and the needle and allows the fuel to come through from the main jet. So the throttle isn't directly connected to these vacuum slides. It's actually connected to the throttle plate, which is behind the slide in there. And then the increased vacuum will lift this slide off and allow the fuel through. So constant velocity carburetors are much easier to get smooth running performance and they're very good when you're changing altitudes and things like that. That's why a lot of the major manufacturers use these. Very good carburetors. The difference to those are what we call mechanical slide or uh, flat slide, round slide carburetors. So on this arrangement here, you can see these are some old GSXR 750 carburetors that we've got ready for the, the CB750 build. With this, the throttle linkage itself here actually operates the mechanical slide itself. Let's see if we can get that open there. There we go. So the linkage is directly connected to the slide. These are a little bit trickier to set up, um, but the big advantage of these is when the throttle is wide open, the actual bore itself has no, if I can actually get it wide open, there we go. The bore itself has no restriction through it, whereas a CV carb, you still have the open throttle butterfly. Although it's at 90 degrees inside there, it's still a restriction to airflow through there. The other big advantage of these flat slide carbs is that you can run them without an airbox. So you can run them using these velocity stacks. So these you can replace and change for different length stacks. So normally the shorter stack will give you a better performance at higher RPM and the longer stack will give you more torque and better performance, lower mid range. So you can tune them with the jet size and the needle size and the springs in there to actually tune the carburetors for the performance you're looking for. So they're the two main different types of carburetors that you use. I prefer flat slides because 
they sound really really cool so whilst we're here and we've got these uh, these carbs out of the box just to show you folks I've just whipped one of the um, one of the top covers off so we can have a quick look inside and see the differences between these flat slides and the CV carburetors so inside here there is no diaphragm there is no rubber if I actually turn the throttle linkage here which is where your cables go on to you can see how it's connected through each of these carburetors into the top and it mechanically lifts the slide up a little anti-rattle spring in there and this little adjuster on the top here is how you will set your carb balance rather than in between the carburetors because you'll see on these they don't have any adjustment screw in between the carburetors for setting up the balancing. So what you have to do is a bit like a tap it on an old Ford Pinto engine or something like that. You've got this lock nut here, which you've slackened off as you can see, with the flat in the top. And all you do, I'm going to screwdriver and pop it in there for you guys and have a look at the slide from the back of the opening. As you turn the screwdriver, you can see the slide lifting off the seat see that there so it goes down less airflow more airflow and once you've got it set up you then just lock that lock nut off and it will stop that from adjusting any further and that's it with these just a quick note folks when you're putting the carburetors back on if you haven't replaced the boots themselves the rubber boots to the inlet um, heat them up slightly with a hot air gun first, get them nice and supple, the same when taking them off because otherwise you're going to really really struggle to seat the carburetors nice and flat. Okay let's talk about carburetor balancing then, so we've looked at the adjustments on them and we're looking at, we've explained why we're doing the balancing, trying to get the same airflow through each of the cylinders. The carburetors are back on, the boots are tight up in there and the, that is where the adjustment screws are as well, right next to the HT leads. So hopefully they're nicely insulated so we don't get a shock off of those. Um, your vacuum pipe's connected back at the top, your throttle cable's back on at the end and the choke cable's on. Can be a little bit fiddly, a little bit tricky, but persevere with it, get them on nice and square, make sure the throttle doesn't stick and is adjusted properly with the correct free play, like that. And then underneath the carburetors, on this model particularly, the vacuum pipes themselves are actually part of the rubber boot. A lot of the times it's part of the intake of the carburetor, but down the bottom you have the little vacuum pipes. I'm not sure if we can see this M1 a bit better. And it connects onto here. So they will normally have rubber vacuum pipes on. You pull them off or blanks and connect your gauges up to those vacuums. So we've got four pipes coming off, going up to the vacuum gauges. And then these needles, when you first, these have got an open and close port on the bottom. When you first open them up, they were jumping around and you fine tune it to get your needle to sit nice and steady. These are a mechanical type of gauge. There's mercury gauges and digital gauges, various types of gauges. But on a bike like this, it doesn't need to be super, super accurate. These gauges are more than good enough to balance these carbs. Um, so we'll do that. We'll start it up. We'll get it warmed up and then we'll try and balance the carbs and go through that with you folks. Uh, one quick point to mention is even if you get the carburetors balanced nicely they might still sound like uh, they're missing slightly or a bit rough running when you're revving it up. The normally main reason for that if everything inside the carburetors is good and you've balanced them properly and the, the needles are all uh, the right size and the jets are clear etc is that the velocity stacks we looked at on the flat slide carbs are normally built in to the airbox on CV carbs. So you've got the airbox here, this goes down on top of the carbs like that, and as you can see underneath, that's where your velocity stacks are built into the airbox. So the airbox being fitted on CV carburetors makes a big, big difference. So if you can get the airbox on it and still gain access to the adjustment, that's always nice. But if not, you can adjust them like this get them set up right, then put the airbox back on and give it another run. Another quick thing to mention before we start folks is that uh, as a base setting for these, you, I've just done these by eye, working from the one closest to the throttle connection away, setting them up so that they're all by eye, roughly the same distance 
off the seat when it's closed. You can also use feeder gauges, but once you start it up and get it running, you'll soon get an idea of how close they are to each other. And another quick thing is whilst you are trying to balance these up, if you've got one carburetor that just will not balance up and it's all over the place and it seems very, very odd to all the others, just swap your vac pipes over and just make sure the gauge is actually reading correctly. I've been caught out with that before. And if, you're, if your gauge is out, you can then take into account how far it's out by and use that to adjust it that way. Just a little key point that I've had problems with in the past, so I thought I'd share with you. So here we go guys, we've got it warmed up, or warming up. We've got a well ventilated area with the door open. We've got our temporary fuel tank, so it's easier to gain access to the vacuum pipes and the adjustments. And the process you're going to see is as you adjust the balance of the carburetors, you're going to also need to adjust the idle speed to compensate for the airflow. So as you make an adjustment, you'll hear the idle go up and down and then you adjust the idle speed until you get it all nicely balanced and a good idle speed on it. Now here you can see as you adjust the opening to the vacuum gauge the needle bounces more and more and more. So you need to close it up until a point where you can get a stable reading off the needle but be careful not to go too far. If you go too far what you will do is lock it off completely and the needle will just be stuck there, not actually reading the vacuum. So there we have it guys, that's uh, the set of carburetors balanced, quite a nice easy set to adjust to be honest. Um, started up lovely and because they were set fairly well to begin with it was only minor adjustment once up to operating temperature. Uh, but another quick tip is just when you're doing this, if you do have a temporary fuel connection on it like this, if you start getting it misfire and a rough running don't forget to check the fuel level because it may have been running low. So now all's left to do is pop the airbox back together, tank and fairings, and then hopefully soon we'll be able to take you guys out for a ride along with us. So then folks, here we have it. A uh, nice little fairly simple technical video for you folks to hopefully help you understand carburetor balancing a little bit further. Uh, hopefully it's been of use, so there's been some information in there that's helped somebody out there. Uh, a little bit of fun along the way. Unfortunately, we have had to we've had to lose Larry, but uh, you know this is this is what's going to happen to him when things like that occur. So unfortunately, Larry's gone, and uh, hopefully, no more nuisance in the workshop. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for watching. Look after yourself. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Out of a dirty.